I remember opening the, the door one night and he's got his light on at the back, there's just blood everywhere. And he's sat at the back of the cell just going like that and it's just going everywhere. And I'm yeah. thinking, and obviously because you're on nights, you know, the instant thing there would be probably to open the door, go in, but because you're on nights, you Not can't. Allowed to. You have to wait for an officer in charge. So I'm pretty much just watching this guy cut himself to ribbons. Growing up, I would say that I was around a lot of criminal activity that I saw a lot. Yep. So it was literally a situation of how can I come away from that? And that was literally by joining a government kind of job. Okay. I think I was about 21, 22. Really? I, was, I, was quite, yeah, I was quite young when I... Different from you, I never had any intention of going into the prison service. Okay. I literally fell into it as I was waiting for... I was actually a part-time fireman at the same time. Oh, sick. So that was the career that I was wanting. Yeah. However, my girlfriend's mum at the time mm -hmm. was a prison officer. Didn't really want to do it, if I'm honest, but mm -hmm. I just thought, you know what, it's a career with, at the time, a decent salary, mm -hmm. although it's not as good not now. Not as good now, yeah. Um, so that was my train of thought, that it was a backup plan. Strangely enough, the letters just kept coming through the door, and I was in there within, I'd say, two or three months. I think now you could probably just walk in the door. Walk in, yeah. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably. You probably could. I worked at HMP Wanza. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a men's jail. I think they had about 1,500 and something um, inmates there. Mm. I was around loads of different inmates from people that probably didn't pay their TV licence to murderers to everything, you name it. All spectrum. Yeah, literally. What category was that? It was, so originally it was meant to be a B, yeah. but they had a section within the jail that they said was a C. Right, OK. Yeah, but it was basically a cat B. Uh, I worked at Lancaster Farms, which mm. probably around about 1,200 lads. I mean, 21-year-old lads, we all know what they're like. Um, it was just absolutely bonkers. Mayhem, I can Mayhem. Imagine. Even before you've had a cup of tea in the morning, you're rolling around on the floor with six or seven alarms. Yeah. You know, and you're just thinking, Jesus Christ, I've just got up. For someone who's not worked in a prison or been to prison, you can't fully, un well, can't fully explain the environment and how kind of hostile it is. <laughs> but that's the job that you join, that's, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you, you have to get used to it quite quickly. Yeah. Um, I think when you open them gates the first time and go onto that wing, and there's 80 lads, 21 year old, going absolutely nuts. The sound and the echoing, the... Shouting. Yeah, yeah. And if it's, it's your first time, Yeah. you got, like you said, put on this brave face. I remember the first time I walked onto the landing, and I had everyone whistling, shouting at me, and the landings, I don't know if you're... Did you have... Um... Just twos. They were like in so we had fours. Right. It literally went all the way up, and I just remember walking on, and all the guys looking over at me, and I'm having to do that like a catwalk. I'm having to literally walk down the landing, <laughs> hearing the whistling. Oh, I miss this, that. Oh my God, look this, that. And I just had to put on this brave face. Mm. I, there was one point when I first started, I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. This is too much. And it, not just because of the the inmates. It was obviously the staff. It was just everything. It was so. It was completely different to training. And I was just like, no, I don't think I can do this. Yeah. Like. Looking back now, I actually don't know how no. I even got through the time that I did get through. I'm not going to lie, I used to go on when I initially joined thinking, what the hell have I done here? I like the prisoners, I won't lie. I actually got along with some of them. Some of them, are, like, they were such decent human beings. Mm. And it's like, how did you even wind up here kind of thing? I gave, Obviously, it was a respect thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You help me out, I help you out kind of thing. You listen to what I have to say, I listen to what you have to say. If you need anything and if I can obviously accommodate it, um, then yeah, then we can... I think, I think there's a certain amount of that just being a general prison officer. Because if you look at the numbers game, three officers on a wing, there might be me, there might be someone who's 50 odd, mm -hmm. an older girl who's maybe up for retirement, there might be one man and there's 80 prisoners. If yeah. you're not, if you do not create relationships or like you say, Gonna put go positive into there. Mm -hmm. you, you could be wrapped up within minutes. You could minutes. have all sorts done to you. I mean, yeah. I know one of the officers that I used to work with was locked in a cupboard and held hostage. Very simple to do. So it's, it's, and they have nothing the, to lose. It's a numbers game. And even when the alarm bell goes, because of staff shortages, you, you'd be lucky now if three or four come running through a gate. And if you've got a wing of 80 people going at it... It's still not... The numbers still don't add up. <coughs> it's still outnumbered it's, by them. Yeah. Bianca, do you, do you think you were treated differently as a female in a prison full of male prisoners? Um, yes and no. I feel like being a female, 
I feel like I could talk to them a lot better. Like with a guy, like even now with security, with a guy and a guy, sometimes it's a bit like, yeah, of course. Yeah, you're locking me up, like, but don't talk to me kind of thing. And that yeah. way, whereas, whereas I was a female, it was more like, like, come on, like, we know, da 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 da. I can kind of calm them down. Do you think that the job was affecting your mental health in any way? Yeah. What about you? Massive. Yeah, I feel like um, at one point, I think I was even become depressed, probably from. Not the job itself, because we had a lot, obviously a lot to deal with, like people cutting themselves yeah. and like all all of that. Now I don't I don't mind blood if I'm honest with you, but when in that scenario, like if people are like screaming and they're crying that they need to see this family member or that person or this, yeah. and there's only so much we can actually do. Like we want to do, obviously we're good people, we want to do more for them, but we can't because of the situation that they're in. But I feel like my mental state at one point was a bit up and down and there was no one to talk to. And if you've actually worked in a jail, no one would understand, like they say, go home and talk to your family. You could go home and say, oh, by the way, mum, um, I just saw someone try to hang themselves today. Yeah. And I also don't know, that's a bit, but they don't actually understand no, no, they've not seen it. the pictures. Like it's a repeat in your head or having nightmares or, and that's something you can't, once you've seen something. Well, it's a version of PTSD, isn't it? Yeah, it is PTSD. You, can't, um, you can't obviously unsee it and then it becomes normal to you. Although I started to go home and I'd become more of a recluse, mm. quite a social person. But after a day, kind of like, a, like an A shift or a 12 hour shift, same as you. I remember on a night shift, walking around doing the pegging, mm -hmm. which is like checking the cells every hour to make sure everyone's all right, to make sure everyone's not hanging themselves, whatever. I remember opening the, the door one night, sorry, the flap on the door. And do you know when you kind of think, I'm not just seeing that. And he's got his light on at the back, there's just blood everywhere. And he's sat at the back of the cell just going like that and it's just going everywhere and I'm yeah. thinking, oh, and obviously because you're on nights, you know, the instant thing there would be probably to open the door, go in, but because you're on nights, you can't, Not to. you have to wait for an officer in charge, Oscar one to come. So I'm pretty much just watching this guy cut himself to ribbons. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, it, it didn't affect me at the time because you just get on. Like, yeah, like I said, I've been in the fire brigade. So I've seen a whole array of things but I think about it probably more now or when I finished. Mm -hmm. And same with the shift, I'd go home and I'd act all day long and I'd go home and I just wouldn't want to speak to anyone. As the time went on in there, I became, I started to go under a little bit more, started to drink a lot more. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah, go actually, home at night, yeah. I'd put a bath on, bottle of red wine, half of the red wine would be done before I even get in the bath. Yeah. Um, but you I don't think, realise it at the time, is it? No, I think that was, looking back on it, it was a, a stress reliever. It was to get to sleep. Ready for the next one. Yeah, yeah. There's one prisoner that I was very cool with. The reporter I had with the, with the prisoner, I felt like I was just normal again. Like I was actually able to talk about normal life inside of a job. Trust. You trust him? Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually did trust the, um, I actually did trust the prisoner. Did you ever think that he was doing it to... Manipulate? Yeah. Did you ever get that inkling? No, never got... Do you know, and the funny thing is, that person was known for manipulating. I don't know if it's because I was young. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Built the rapport mm. over months that way. Literally, that was my turning point, and then I became too close. I would say okay. to that inmate. Um, yeah, I literally became too close to that inmate. That's when like phone calls started happening with the person, and then I just felt. I honestly didn't feel like I was working in the jail. Phone calls, as in what you with him? Yeah. So what? I presume he had a mobile in jail. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. So. Um, whether it was his or the person's yeah. or however he got it, he got it. And then I just, one thing led to another. Uh, obviously we was friends, we didn't do nothing inside jail or anything like that. But it was more like I confided in him. How long was he serving? How long was he serving? I think like seven years. So it would right. half. I was trying to get my head around, are you thinking, right, he's got a year to do. So I'll he had get, about I'll two, he him. had about two, he had about two, two and a half left. So when one thing obviously led to another, yep. by then I was already in too deep. Like I didn't even realise, oh my gosh, was he manipulating me this whole time? And then afterwards, obviously when I did get arrested and everything, because um, allegedly I was bringing in, um, okay. they said I was bringing in phones, I was bringing in drugs, I was bringing in this, but it wasn't any of that. I literally stepped into the jail and I had like fat strips. So it was class C. So what I got charged for was um, anabolic steroids, class C. Okay. Um, so it was like fat strippers to lose weight. <clears throat> Um, to put in the gym. Yeah, gym stuff. That, yeah, that kind of stuff. So um, they tried to link it to him, but obviously there was no link because I didn't 
didn't pass anything over. I didn't. And obviously when I stepped in, I didn't hide it or anything. I literally just... So I'm saying I didn't. Yeah, well, no, uh, yeah, because I'll get onto that in a minute. Yeah, Remind I didn't me about initially that. to like hide it, like, oh my god, I'm smuggling in stuff or anything. Like, I literally just had it in my jacket. Do you mind quickly telling us what were the things you've done? Like, what you smuggled? What? what, what right. Okay. So initially, it was mobile phones into prison um, with a fairly large gang. Um, it then became, I mean, the same packet. The packages were given to me. I didn't have anything to do with what was in the packaging. I was given a package, I was basically a transporter, mm. you know, if for want of a better word. Now, the, the first couple of packages, I believed it was a mobile phone. And after maybe two or three, I mean, I'm not daft, I can smell cannabis, I can smell, you know, you, mm, it's fairly yeah. obvious what's going on. And then it became more than just mobile phones, it became cannabis, <coughs> steroids, stuff like that, even mm. watches sometimes. I know it sounds really ridiculous. You know, that's it, it becomes stupid. I'd lost all kind of... I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'd lost all reality at that point. You, you know, don't feel like you're in jail? No, I, I was, was losing... Weird. It was weird. Yeah, even in my own personal life, I'd lost the grip. Yeah. So that was just an extension of that. Yeah. So, you know, if you'd yeah, have asked me to bring you a packet of polos in, I probably would, <laughs> because I didn't... I, my head was gone. Yeah, yeah. So, I can appreciate that. In, in my mind, mentally, I qualified it in the sense of... I worked there, say, three, four years. Okay. I reckon I was searched properly. I mean, I'm not, you know, obviously you get your pat down yeah. search. I reckon I was searched properly twice in that time. So when I was doing what I was doing, the mentality was, You're not gonna get I'm not going to get searched. I mean, although I hid the packages and whatnot. Okay. Um, we don't need to go into detail about that, but yeah. I, I don't think there was a big risk of me getting caught that way. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Red handed, which is back to what you're saying about just walking through with it. Because I never pocket. got searched the whole time I was there. Never, ever, 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 ever got searched. My scenario was I'd been sat in the garden. I mean, I'd been doing this now for a while. Mm -hmm. I was sat in the garden, opened up that newspaper. Middle page spread. Drugs are prevalent in UK jails. And mm -hmm. it's got a picture of Lancaster Castle and one of the lads who I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. So I'm now thinking, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, oh my God. Mm. And I was on holiday at that point due to going on an early shift on, say, the Monday. Mm -hmm. I still had two packages at my house and my mentality then was, right, the game's up, finito. Mm. Everybody's on to you. I walked into the jail, went past the two doors where you see the signs, if you bring anything past this point, you will serve up to 10 yeah. years in jail. Walked into the jail nothing untoward, there was no cars around, there was only four people in the jail at that point, or so I thought. Mm -hmm. um, walked through the security gates, like I said, the door <coughs> opened, and it was the PO on my wing. So he said, um, much the same as you, can I have a word a minute? I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, walked into the room, which was like a little room off the corridor. Mm -hmm. I had my little bag with me, sandwiches in. Uh, and he said, and it was a man who I really liked. I used to play football with him at dinner time. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of respect for him. And he said, I need to ask you a question. I said, right, okay. Now, I'm thinking he's gonna ask me something about the wing. Mm. And he said, have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? And I said, no, no, no. He said, I'm gonna ask you again, have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? And I said, no, no. He said, right, okay, you're gonna have to come upstairs with me. There's a Northwest area search team waiting for you. Mm. I was like, oh God, here we go. And I knew the game was up then. Mm. So I walked up the stairs, there was two dogs, a couple of handlers, three or four different officers. There was a governor there and I just thought, right, it's over. When you guys got caught, how, how did it feel? No, oh. when, I, when I got caught, when I, well, when I first stepped in and then I realised they were doing the searches, I was like, oh my gosh. What's going on? Like, I think I even remember trying to put like one of the, the packages behind the heater, like just like get it away from me kind of thing. And after I was just like, my life's over. That's all I remember saying, like, oh my gosh, yeah. Bianca, you I've never been in handcuffs. I've never I've never been in trouble like that. I never even got a detention in school. Being in sitting in handcuffs, and I just remember sitting there like yeah, the whole world falls apart. They put me in a cell and it's like it it jumped from having that rapport with a prisoner to now I'm sitting in a cell. With four St walls. Still full screw kit on. Still had my kit. I remember yeah. going to the police station and then I remember someone was like, Ro, why is she here? Like, ain't she meant to be one of you lot? Before I had got out of the cell the next day, it went round to all the jails. 
literally, like, you know, that light skin gov, that did it, it got around to all the gels, everyone knew before I could even say anything. That's when I finally got it around my head. Okay, I'm going to jail. Um, so what, in, in your mind, what do you think you would end up doing? Realistically, if you want to Oh, probably about two and a half, three. Yeah. About, around about them times, like, yeah. Cause if, if she's saying to me, you're going to look at four or five years, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, my life's over. Like, when you hear five, that's a long time. Oh, Though it's yeah. do half, it's still a long time, especially when they've it's, never been in trouble. So then, I've and it's a license period. I found the license period afterwards. Worse, was, was isn't that, it? Oh, was it worse? Mine, mine was seven years. That's after license. So four years jail, seven years license. That's a lot. That's of Eleven less. years of your life that you're under someone else's like control, basically, and not even having to like do anything about it. So I've, I just want to hope and get it over and done with now. Yeah. I didn't like the fact that I had to wait a year just for them to make a decision. Bianca, can you explain? Why you ended up not going to prison? What was what was the whole thing with the with with the, Um your... I felt like I didn't go to jail because of obviously you know you got to do character references. Yep. Like for court and everything. Obviously I was they said to me, my solicitor said to me, like, she was honest, I won't lie, and I'm happy that I had her. She's like, you looked about four or five years. Um, they're gonna make an example out of you. Really? Yeah, and I was just like, what, for class C? Like I was proper like Adamant, like I went not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. I was like, nope, I didn't hand over nothing. You've got no evidence. Like I was so like, no, like mm. I'm not having it. I, I just couldn't get my head around that I should be going to jail, especially when I wasn't doing it for financial gain. Yeah. Joking aside, I think because, I mean, this is what got me through the actual jail period, I think. Like I said, I've become, a, for two years, I saw lads crumble in there, you know, hard men, big men, yeah. experienced men. I saw them crumble for me for two years. I didn't, not once. I can become a robot. It's but I weird, think because though. we've worked in a jail, I already had the routine in my mind and I already knew what might happen. I already knew what the system was. I mm. already knew that I had to write on a bit of paper to... So do you think that helped? That I, th helped? I think it did. Looking, looking, I mean, I didn't think it at the time because my head was mashed. I mean, on bail, I was crying like a baby. Like yeah, I said, behind crying, closed doors. Like a, but... After a couple of wines, I'd be crying like a baby, thinking, what have I done? What have I done, done to my family? What have I done to my life? What have I done to my mates? Yeah. But I didn't kind of show it in public. I think that's probably because you've worked in jail and mm. you're putting on that brave face that mm. you used to do with probably the inmates. Yeah. You probably did it again after the situation, probably with your family and friends yeah. and everything. So but the jail time, I was exactly the same. No emotion, no nothing. After jail, different kettle of fish. It all just went... Whew. Probably because you held it in for so long mm. as well. Whereas I think I've mentally prepared. I used to go to church. I remember going to church every single Sunday. Um, with the person that was in jail's family, even. Okay. Yeah, every Sunday, and they kind of helped me through. And they just said, no, just give it to God. Like, things happen for a reason. There's a reason as to why you're going. And only till like, I think two weeks before my court case, I kind of just said, you know what? Accept it, Bianca. So the person that I was talking to, he's actually my son's dad now. Um, so yeah, we had a full on relationship outside, lived together. So it wasn't manipulation, uh, is what okay. you said. It was actually, um, yeah, I went to a relationship, had a child. Um, now, obviously, I picked up the security. Obviously, I do my own. So after the whole getting arrested, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, you think your life's over kind yeah, of yeah. thing. So I literally started my own security business. Brilliant. Um, called P1 Protection. So it's literally given everyone a chance. Because obviously, when you got a criminal record as well, of course. it's hard to get jobs and everything. Obviously, you got to have a full-on SIA licence and everything. But yeah. I cater for females that have security work, guys and everything. And I literally just turned my life around. I really? didn't let that hinder me. Cause like you said, the license thing, it's like you're under this, like a spell, like you can't do nothing. Yeah. You can't go yeah. nowhere. Any job you apply for now, it's literally CRB check. Mm. Oh my God, yeah, I forgot in this time I've had this and everything. So, no. and even after that, they contacted me to come back to the jail cause they needed staff for the pandemic. So. Really? Yeah. Whoa. So it's just like, you fight, do you, know I mean? you want to get rid of me? You want me to go to jail? Now that you see me, I'm doing, I've got my own business and everything yeah. with security, and then now you offer me to come back to the jail that you tried to send me to? No. Could you imagine that? I mean, I know, I know boys and girls that have been in there, and you'll know officers the same. And I'm the same as you. I look back now and think, I could have been in that job for the next 20, 30 years, and I wonder what kind of mess it would have made at me. I mean, I mean you look at the mess it made of me in three or four years. The mental state, you might not have been able to function properly. There's so much different things that it could have impacted you. So you... Well, there is that stat about the prison officers, about when they leave the job, mm. if they've done a certain amount of stretch, um, working there, 
within the first two years, something's really stupidly high, like 60% mm. of people over a certain age end up dead. Yeah. Because I've of, because of, of their the daily life is that fast paced. Yeah. When they retire, they're sat at home watching Homes Under the Hammer and it's something, honestly, the, the statistics are unreal. It's crazy. It really is. Yeah. So I want to ask our one last question. Looking back at everything you've been through, mm. how do you feel about it? Do you regret anything? Do I regret anything? Looking back now, I actually don't. Mm. And I feel like that made me where I am today. If I didn't go through what I went through mm. and to see the turnover, obviously with my little one, my business, I don't think I would have pushed myself so hard. I just got myself back up. And I feel like if I didn't go through what I went, what I went through, I wouldn't have this story today. I wouldn't be able to like, um, teach people what I went through for them exactly, to not go yeah. through. Because I know there's so many officers still out there that's probably feeling the same thing and they ain't got no one to talk to you about it. But I feel like well, for myself, it's made me a stronger person today. Yeah. So I don't, I don't regret anything. I feel like I'm a better human. I do regret, obviously I regret what I did because it could have put people in jeopardy. Um, I regret what it did to my mum and dad. I regret um, putting myself, afterwards, put myself through a lot of pain. Mm. That's probably the biggest regret, because now I look back and I think, it was just an experience, yeah, you did wrong. Yeah, you did wrong. And mistakes. I'm happier now than what I was then. I would say to any young member of staff or new officer, if you're involved in that kind of thing, you need to understand, I had a chance to get out, I could have handed my keys in. Do mm. You know, the day before I got caught, if I'd have handed my keys in, I wouldn't be sat here saying the same thing. Mm. So if you're doing what you're doing or you feel like you're going to do what you're going to do, you need to make your mind up whether you want to stay in that job or just leave it. Because there are other jobs out there, there are other opportunities. Um, don't feel trapped in it. I remember a fella coming in the middle of the road, machine gun, doo -doo 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 -doo. bouncer's been hit straight in the head, standing next to me. I just remember all the little youngsters like standing over his body, jumping over the bar, 